Alright ladies and gentlemen, this is just going to be a low key, low budget video because as a lot of you guys probably know, I'm actually in the process of reviewing the Xbox One X at this time. My review is taking a little bit longer because there are a bunch of features and things that I wanted to test out that weren't available prior to launch, so I didn't really want to rush my review. So I'm hoping my Xbox One X review will be around the end of this week. That way I can give you guys my full impressions and full opinions of whether or not you should pick it up or not. But another question that I've been getting a lot on social media is what 4K monitor are you using? because really the only purpose of buying an Xbox One X or maybe even a PlayStation 4 Pro is the 4K capability, whether it's native, checkerboard, upscaled. 4K is the main selling point of these upgraded consoles. And it's a question that's a really good one because there aren't a lot of choices out there that are capable, or gaming-wise anyways, are capable of supporting the Xbox One X or the PlayStation 4 properly. So in this video, I'm gonna be letting you guys know what monitor I've been using and suggestions on other ones that you could probably pick up. So hopefully you guys enjoy the video. All right, so anytime I talk about technology, I always think that it's important to establish a baseline of what I've been using for the last couple of years. That'll kind of give you guys an idea of where I'm coming from, where my opinions are being kind of shaped. So the monitor that I've been using as my main center gaming monitor, where I play all my PC and PlayStation and Xbox games, is the ASUS ROG PG279Q. It is an IPS monitor, which is my ideal type of monitor. It has a max resolution of 1440p and it has an awesome refresh rate of a maximum of 165 hertz. I personally only run it at 144 hertz because I find that that's more stable. The 165 hertz, as crazy as it sounds, is an overclocked, so I don't really need the overclock. I just need something that has a high refresh rate, so the 144 hertz is awesome, awesome for me. And it's it's an amazing monitor. It is one of the, oh, the best monitor that I've been using the last couple of years. Not only has it made my game experience awesome on PC with its G-Sync capability, it made switching between consoles via the HDMI a lot easier as well. Uh, but the main problem with it is that it's not a 4K monitor and as well, it doesn't support HDMI 2.0. And HDMI 2.0 is required to get 4K resolution out of your consoles, either your PlayStation 4 Pro or your Xbox One X. So the purpose of today's video isn't trying to sell you guys a 4K monitor. It's actually, probably you could view it as the exact opposite. If you can wait, I highly recommend that you guys wait six months to a year before you kind of start diving into 4K resolutions, especially if you want the 4K experience on a console. The main reason for this is that the 4K technology and 4K monitors available on today's market are in a really weird spot because for the last couple of years, the only way to get 4K is via a PC. And that's pretty much where the hardware manufacturers, these modern manufacturers, have pretty much have been designing these monitors for. So 4K resolution is supported by DisplayPort, but once again, you need HDMI 2.0 to play your Xbox One X or your PlayStation 4 Pro at 4K resolution. It can't be HDMI 1.4, which the majority of the monitors on the market today are. It has to be HDMI 2.0. And when you try to find HDMI 2.0s, you really have a limited selection of what is out there on the market today. Like I said, the majority of the monitors were developed for PC and it's just the way it is what it is at this point. Simply put, the monitor that I want today, it doesn't exist on the market. It's not even out there in the wild no matter how much you want to pay for it. And it looks like based on what I've, I've been kind of keeping up with all the monitor news, the closest one that I could possibly pick up that would meet my needs is looking to be around $2,000. <laughs> and yes, $2,000 for a game monitor, which is absolutely insane, especially when you consider you can pretty much build a pretty beastly PC rig for $2,000. Um, but yeah, you pay for new technologies and stuff. Once again, another reason why I think and recommend that you guys should wait before jumping balls deep into 4K. But if I were to give you guys a specs of what I would personally want and what my holy grail monitor would be, it would be a 4K monitor obviously running at 120 refresh rate or hertz. The reason why I need the high refresh rate is it makes the editing process a lot easier when I'm recording at a PC footage, if it doesn't run at high frame rate uh, and drops below constantly, dropping below 60, it, I have to manually like resync the audio to video, just makes for a gigantic headache. So it's just a more of a practicality thing. Obviously, it needs the aforementioned HDMI 2.0 because that is the only way you're gonna get resolution from your Xbox One and 
PlayStation 4. And the rest of the rest of this stuff is kind of, it's not required, but it's just the ideal stuff that I would like. I would like it to have NVIDIA G-Sync. I am an NVIDIA guy. I've only used NVIDIA graphics cards in the past and it just, yeah, I've never had issues with them. The drivers are always up to date and having G-Sync just makes everything a lot better and buttery smooth. Ideally, it would be a 27 inch monitor. I don't think there's really any benefit of 4K at anything lower than 27 inches, especially around 24, because you really won't get, you won't see the 4K spread, spread its proverbial legs and kind of you won't see the resolution differences if you're playing on such a small screen it would be an IPS monitor so uh, in plane switching I'm gonna get a little bit later into IPS versus TN panel when I talk about what I've been using but I pre would prefer an IPS and my holy grail thing the stuff that maybe you may not need I would like it to have HDR or high dynamic range it's not a requirement but it would just be a nice bonus if it did have HDR so it's a long wish list of things to have a <laughs> long and expensive wish list to have for a gaming monitor but it's going to eventually come out it's just a matter of when and how much you're going to pay for it all right so that's enough of me talking your guys ears off let's get to the actual recommendation of what gaming monitor i would recommend for you guys so if you're a person who absolutely positively needs 4k right now because you're getting a playstation 4 pro or an xbox one x this holiday, I do recommend the ASUS MG28UQ. So I've been using this monitor for a couple weeks now and it works flawlessly between my PlayStation 4 Pro as well as my Xbox One X. I have done a thorough testing of its 4K resolution and it just looks great. All the games that I run on it look awesome. Once again, if you look at the specs, it's not my ideal monitor, but I'll be honest with you guys, the only reason I bought this monitor was specifically to review the Xbox One X. I was told months ago that I was going to be sent a preview console, a review console, way ahead of launch. And at the time, I didn't have a 4K monitor. And for my Xbox One X review to be worth anything, I felt like it, I had to play and try it out at 4K resolution. So uh, that's the main reason why I picked it up. So if you look at the specs of the ASUS MG28 UQ, you'll notice that it's missing a lot of the features that I would want in my perfect holy grail monitor. The biggest thing of which it's missing is a high refresh rate. So it maxes out at 60 hertz or 60 frames per second natively. So I could not use this monitor to record PC footage because it would just desync my video and audio all the time. I would have to spend ages resyncing everything or running it through Handbrake and just adding to the editing process. So that's the biggest thing that's missing. And as well, it's a TN panel. So I'm not gonna go too in depth in this because there are a lot of tech videos online, especially on YouTube that go really in depth into IPS versus TN panel. I'll give you guys the coolest notes. The main benefit of a TN panel is that it has a super fast response rate, usually around one millisecond, which is the one that this monitor has. So it's designed for really quick action paced games, such as a first person shooter, basically anything where the gameplay is really fast. So you don't have that input lag. That's pretty much the only benefit it has over an IPS monitor. So in general, an IPS monitor has a slower around to five to eight second millisecond response rate and as well but the benefit of an IPS panel is that it has usually more vibrant colors the colors are generally better on the IPS monitor and as well it has better viewing angles with the TN panel you really have to look at it in like a straight perspective you can't view your head and look at at it on an angle because the color is somewhat distort. So yeah, I personally would have preferred an IPS monitor. So there are a couple reasons why I ended up settling on the ASUS MG28 UQ. And <laughs> settling is such a harsh word, but when you don't get exactly what you want, it is settling no matter how you spin it. But the two main reasons why I chose this monitor over any other monitor is first off, it has HDMI 2.0, once again, it is a requirement to play these new consoles at 4K resolutions. So when you guys are researching, make sure your consoles or these monitors that you're researching have HDMI 2.0 or you will not get any video output out of them and you pretty much have to return it and look again basically. The second reason why I chose this monitor over any other monitor on the market today is simply, it's kind of an eye rolling thing. 
but it's just brand loyalty. I've been using Asus monitors for six years now on the channel, and I personally feel that they are the most well-built gaming monitors that you can buy on today's market. There is an LG 4K monitor, which is an IPS monitor, once again, my ideal type of monitor that has HDMI 2.0. I will link to that one in the description as well, but I can't tell you guys my experience with it because I've never tried it, I've never reviewed it. And I can only give you guys my personal opinions of stuff that I've actually used. And yeah, in my experience, AC responders are just the most versatile out there in terms of how you can move them around, how you can maneuver them for different viewing angles. So the MG28UQ actually has a lot of the features that my ROG monitor has. It has front and back tilting. It can be rotated 120, 180 degrees so you can stand it vertically if you would like. It uh, features almost the exact same buttons on the back right hand corner behind the monitor that my ROG monitor has. A nice satisfying clicky buttons and it has a removable clicky panel for cable management and if you guys know me I am really OCD about things and I love to have good cable management in both my PC as well as my desk and it looked great even though the monitor doesn't support high refresh rate or HDR which is another feature that I would have would love to have it just the viewing experience was very enjoyable when I was testing out the PlayStation 4 Pro and Xbox One X on it and and once again, if you absolutely need a 4K monitor this holiday season and you're looking to purchase one, I do highly recommend this one. It's something that I personally have tested and I thought that it does exactly what it does, it says it's gonna do for around 500 bucks. So when I first planned this video, it was supposed to be a very straightforward, what 4K monitor do I recommend for you guys? And kind of throughout the filming of this, it evolved more into uh, should you upgrade to 4K at this time moment. <laughs> and I really didn't give you guys an answer, but hopefully I provided you guys with enough information based on my experiences to kind of help you make an uh, informed consumer choice. Once again, if you can wait, I would wait because when more of these consoles, these 4K capable consoles become available on the market today, Hardware manufacturers, these gaming monitor manufacturers such as Asus, Acer, or LG will pretty much have no choice but to upgrade their hardware to kind of take advantage of them. So the HDMI 2.0, the HDR stuff that you would want, um, it's gonna come eventually. It's just a matter of when and how much. So anyways, that's gonna be it for me. I have a couple of more 4K projects coming up. I'm in the process of testing a couple of gaming capture cards to record your 4K gameplay. I have in-house right now the Elgato 4K60 Pro as well as the Atomos Ninja Inferno. And I still have my Xbox One X review that's kind of scheduled to be released later this week after a couple more days of testing. So you guys can look forward to that. But anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you enjoyed, as always, I do appreciate a quick thumbs up. It lets me know that you guys enjoy these technology videos kind of kind of just a little bit different from the normal walkthrough stuff that I do. So a thumbs up is greatly appreciated. But until then, thank you guys for watching and as always, have a fantastic day.